everybody. Welcome to Polymer Clay TV. I'm Kira. And I'm Elisa. And today we are going to make a little piece of wall art. So I'm going to be using this little, um, it's a plaque that is in the shape of a heart. And the um, transfer sheet that we created for February that's all about love. And I'm going to just make a little something and show you a couple different ways that you could use transfer paper because um, you don't only have to use it on polymer clay. So this will be sort of a mixed media project where I'm going to use it on polymer and also on paper. So I'm going to set up my camera while Elisa tells you a little bit more. We've also used uh, the magic transfer paper on fabric too, but you have to get, with fabric you have to use some kind of medium to get it to stick on there, but you can use something like an Elmer's glue. But with fabric I'd use something that's more meant for fabric so that it stretches a little, because um, otherwise it's just going to be this stiff thing on there. So you can use the transfer paper on other things, not just polymer clay, although that's our choice. Kira's going to show you some few, a few ideas. She's going to show you some crackle paint, which we like. And um, speaking of crackle paint, we have a full tutorial. It's the ultimate guide to um, using polymer clay with, with crackle techniques. And you can check that out on Amazon. You can check it out. In, it's, also, it's available as a Kindle product. It's also on our website at craftylink.com or polymerclaytv.com, so you can check it out there too. And what we did was we did a ton of different um, products and techniques and shared them all, and it includes video as well as a PDF. So if you're interested in learning more about crackling, uh, definitely check that out. So without further ado... <laughs> <laughs> So I have um, here on my table the beginning of this project and I'll put, I'll put some photos at the end of the video to show you how it turns out because it's kind of hard to do it all at once because we have some products here that need to dry. So the first thing I did is I um, laid down a coating of this precious metal color which is a Viva Decor product. Um, on the heart background and I just used my finger because these these paper mache hearts or paper mache in general it has sort of a nubbly texture to it so I kind of liked that that I wasn't getting like full coverage um, these precious metal paints are my favorite for as far as if you're going to use a mica type of paint they are super saturated colors and they have a lot of that sparkly mica powder in them so I just really like how they look on clay and I use them on my other projects too. Um, so what I did here to create the first part of this is I cut out the girl from the transfer. So there she is facing the other way. Um, and I, I used one of my favorite mediums which is called clear tar gel and it's a golden gel medium. <clears throat> um, now it says generates fine lines by dripping from a palette knife or other tool and Elisa I think it's a, a lot like string gel in okay. that way. Yeah I haven't right? used the clear tar gel yet but the string gel I have used which is an interesting technique. Actually we'll have to do that on here to show them how to do that because that's, that's a neat product to work with too. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Um, I, I don't know because I haven't seen tar gel in the store recently but I did see something called like clear pouring gel so I don't know if Golden is sort of playing with the names of their products because you know there it does the same thing but it's got a different name so I used it <clears throat> and I just put a little down with my finger and then I put the girl face down over it and let it dry and then I took it to the sink and washed off the paper just the same way you would do on clay. So you can transfer onto lots of different substrates. You, you're not just stuck with polymer clay with the magic transfer paper. So I put her down and then this side you can see is um, crackled and that's because I used Ranger um, Distress Crackle Paint on there in Picket Fence which is the white color. And I only did part of it, although I'm going to do the rest now. And the reason I did that is because it takes about an hour for all these cracks to show up. And, of course, we're not going to sit here for an hour on video waiting for cracks. 
<laughs> that wouldn't be too exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of the other side of the heart. And this stuff comes with its own little brush on the inside, so that's that's pretty neat. And let me just interrupt you on that one. Sorry, Kira, but you know you always are saying, "Oh, it comes with a little brush." Yeah. The bigger size does not, because I have the bigger size in the clear one, and it doesn't come with the brush. Okay, so the little ones come with the yeah. brush then. Okay. So, so then this, you know, you know, any crackle product, you want to lay it down quickly and not mess with it too much. And the amount that you get in any spot is going to determine how big the crackles are. So if you want big giant crackles, you put a lot of the product on. And if you want it to be sort of random or thin in a spot, you would just put a thin coating. So I did make sure that there's sort of a random thickness going on here. You can see that it's not just all one. It's kind of gloopy in some places. Okay, and then I have, I transferred the line, let your love be like the misty rains, and I transferred onto this polymer clay piece of white um, one of those hearts that are like medium sized, and I've got some Elmer's glue. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these in place right on top of that paint. I'm not concerned too much. I think it'll sort of bond together. And then that way the crackle can sort of come up over the edges of the pieces because I don't want them to just look like they're just stuck on there on top of the crackle. And those so are pre-baked too, those pieces that you're adding now. Yes, I did bake them already. And I'm wiggling them a little bit as I lay them down so that the crackle paint kind of comes up around the sides there of the piece. All right, and then I just wanted to show you one last thing here because this is my drawer o alcohol ink. Um, I have these little alcohol ink daubers, and then we have these things that we love that are called Fantastics, and they're also by. Um, well, this label is going to say Sukineko, but I guess we're going to be Imagine Crafts coming up here when they change their name. They already have changed it. Yeah. In the USA, so. Okay. So basically, they're like a stick that has um, a sort of felty thing at the top, and you can use them to direct the application of inks on like a surface. So I'm going to go ahead and use them to grab some ink from the pad and then color over this white crackle. And you can see that <clears throat> the paint, the white paint will accept the color and it'll be sort of pastel-y and pretty. So you're not stuck with the white. And it, if you wanted to do this process, um, on purpose, you know, like I am, you just start with white and then go over it with whatever color you really wanted it to be. And these um, felt things really spread the ink and help you to decide where you want it and you just kind of work quickly. Alcohol ink dries real fast. Yeah, and just work quickly and spread it around and, and just get it where you want it. You know, you can do multiple colors so that your little artwork all goes together and so that you don't have that stark white. I'll probably leave a little white showing in some spots or whatever, but now it's got more of a unified look where it's not just white on a red with the red heart and stuff. So I like how that looks now. Now I didn't have to worry about like painting crackle paint is exactly where I wanted the different colors if you come back afterwards and color color the dried paint. Right. You know, so you can see over here on the edge that this 
the paint where it was very thin on the edges is starting to crack just a little bit and it'll continue for the next hour or so to crackle all the way and then the next thing you'll see in the video is how it looks finished. So how you finish this is up to you. You can use glitter, you can use little rhinestones and stuff to decorate around there and then I'm gonna tie a little bow of um, fibers up here and hang it on the wall. Very cute. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the crackle paint comes in clear, uh, it comes in white, and it comes in a variety of colors. And you can also mix your own, which I have done many a time. So you're not stuck with the white. You, although the white's really nice if you want to add alcohol inks or some, or, or add your own color, because you have a limited palette when you buy their color colors. You know. So it's nice to be able to either mix your own or to add something to it to get the colors and the, and the design that you want. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of options you have with the crackle paint. And, uh, you know, that, that Tim Holtz one that you saw, the Distress one, we really like that one. Yeah, it's, um, it's a favorite. <laughs> we use it on clay, too. Um, I think we showed, yeah, there's a video of that. Um, from a actually a longer tutorial that I did for the Create Mixed Media blog. If you guys didn't know that, Elisa and I guest post over there, so you can um, go check out our guest post twice a month, uh, where we do little tutorials um, using more mixed media stuff. Right. So, yeah, check us out. You can go to our about page to find all of our social links, so that you don't have to go hunting all over the internet for us. Mm -hmm. And make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything, and, and YouTube will let you know when we have a new show, so that's always cool. Um, you can find us over at craftylink.com, that's our community, we'd love for you to join us, share pictures of things you made and, and how you've gotten inspired, and you can also come to our website at polymerclaytv.com to see even more. And so, if you want to uh, get in on our next big adventure, you can go to polymerclayadventure.com and sign up for updates because we have something really big that we're planning this <laughs> spring. Yes, <laughs> so, and you don't want to miss it. <laughs> yeah, we're very excited about it. It's going to be great, so um, make sure that you get on that list. Definitely. So we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining us.